back to our reInvent live coverage here. Um, I'm Sean Ray and with me is Randall Hunt. Today we've got our expert guest Peter Wickett from the University of Toronto. Uh, he's also with Creative Destruction Lab and he's here to talk about quantum computing and machine learning. Thank you for having me. No problem. So I hear you've been doing some uh, interesting research. Can you talk about what you're currently working on? So my research looks at, at the intersection of uh, quantum physics and quantum computing and artificial intelligence and machine learning. So it goes, it goes two ways. So on one hand, I'm interested on, on how you can use quantum computers to build uh, learning algorithms. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I also look at how you can use deep learning and the traditional machine learning methods to advance research in physics. And both are very exciting, and, and it's even more exciting that the quantum computers that we have today are actually interesting and relevant to AI research. That's very interesting. I've never really heard about quantum computing and machine learning together. Can you talk a little bit about that? Is that something unique that you're doing yourself? Well, you know, it's, it's like you know, two, two buzzwords and you combine it so you get this massive buzz. It's, it's a very exciting field. Uh, it's, it's relatively small uh, compared to you know, the rest of machine learning, but it's, it's evolving very fast. So what happened over the last few years is that we started to develop algorithms uh, that uh, that are developed for quantum computers which are imperfect. So they only have a small number of qubits. Uh, you can't run long algorithms. So, so think about it this way. Think about that you have, uh, you have to code some learning algorithm and you can, you can only use fine lines of Python code. So that's, that's pretty much where we are with, uh, with quantum computers. You can only run very short algorithms on them. And, but now we have a, a couple of these algorithms which are designed for these computers. And these algorithms happens to be inter, happen to be interesting for doing machine learning and AI research. What kind, what kind of algorithms are they? So, so there are a couple of building blocks that you can use. Any, any quantum computer out there can do optimization. And the kind of optimization that they can do is, is, is different from are the stuff that you do on your GPU. So right? this, when you say optimization, what I'm thinking of is you know you have a, 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 a multi-dimensional space where you're trying to find a, a valley that would be the right spot, like Newton's method, finding the lowest. Yeah. Is, yeah, it, exactly. is it that sort of stuff? Uh, so, so you do it differently. So that would be how you would do it on a digital computer, right? So that's what you do in backpro. Right. But that's, that's not really how it works in a quantum computer. So first of all, you can't really do continuous value. Uh, uh, operations. So, for instance, you can't do like this gradient descent that you would do for deep learning. So, instead, what you do, what you have is a binary optimization problem. It's quintessentially discrete. And and the way it works is that you start from basically having a uniform distribution over all possible configurations that could solve that problem. And what the quantum computer does is that it changes this probability distribution. It transforms it until it peaks above the optimal solution. And it just it, it, it just, you take the distribution and then all of a sudden you have the answer, is it? Yeah, so, yeah, so what you do is uh, you run the quantum computer for one round, let's say 50 milliseconds. Then you, then you measure it, okay? That means that you pull out one possible answer. But you know, what I said is that the probability distribution peaks above the optimal. It doesn't tell you that it's optimal. So what you do is you keep repeating it a few times, maybe a thousand times, and then you choose the, the one with the, with the lowest energy configuration, which is, you know, corresponds to, to a low value in your objective function. So any quantum computer, any quantum algorithm is like that. It's probabilistic, you have to keep repeating it. So you repeat it, you know, it's, it's 50 milliseconds for one, one run, and then you run it a few times, and then you get like a very good uh, local optimum, or a good day you get the global optimum. So the, the probabilistic nature of that might be very useful here in Vegas. That's right. That, that's how I think of Vegas, really. It's like a big quantum computer. See people getting banned from casinos in the future from their quantum computer. So you're talking about, you know, we're, we're very limited at the moment, kind of the five lines of Python style um, computing. There are a lot of people around the world now currently working on quantum computing and trying to increase the qubits. If, if that's kind of a given that someone's going to solve that problem for you, how do you see the research that you're doing kind of applying if someone solves the, the kind of five-line Python? I, I, honestly, I would be very disappointed because my research focusing on using these imperfect quantum computers. Right. So if suddenly there's a perfect quantum computer, then you know I'm no longer on tenure track. So that's <laughs> that's a dangerous proposition. Well, yeah, like I would be very happy because um, so when you use these algorithms that are developed for imperfect quantum computers, you get some speed up in a couple of years, maybe three or four years. 
but it's not going to be an exponential speed up. It's not going to be a polynomial speed up. It's going to be like what GPUs give you. So it's some constant time speed up relative to CPUs. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting because you can do a lot of fun with this constant time, uh, time speed up. But if all of a sudden you have a perfect quantum computer, then you can start using these, these uh, algorithms that give you a polynomial speed up, an exponential speed up. And that's a game changer. But it's, it's not just that the quantum computers are not ready yet. The world is not ready yet for that, because then you can crack encryption and all of that. So you were talking a little bit uh, earlier about the, the algorithms that you can build currently with this kind of imperfect state, yeah. this error correcting state, where you're trying to you know run for a bunch of times, get the probability. Yeah. So are those algorithms like linear regression, or uh, what, what, what kind of applications are there? So, so think of these as building blocks. So optimization would be one. And okay. then you can sample certain probability distributions. That's one of them. Then you can craft like really clever kernels. Uh, and then it's a question of, of where do you use these uh, uh, algorithms. So you know, deep learning is out because you need 32-bit precision uh, uh, numbers to represent one weight in a neural network. And you have at most 2,000 qubits on a quantum computer. So it's, it's a misfit. You have to find those learning algorithms that, are, that map to these paradigms. So one example would be, for instance, meta-learning or, or ensemble learning, where you have just a finite number of models that are already trained, for instance, and then you want to combine them in a non-trivial way to give you a stronger predictor. So that's, that's a problem that maps very well to a quantum computer. So if you had multiple classification networks and you wanted to combine all of those into one model, you could say, this is the probability that this classification from this model is better than the one from these other models. Yeah, along those lines. Along those lines. So, so you train all of these uh, so deep learning networks on classical computers, and then the quantum computer complements the calculation by finding the optimal combination of them. Ah, that's and really that's, cool. that's the right way of thinking about it. So where, where are we in this research? You know, what, what, what's, the, what's the current state? Uh, industries that are interested in this type of research well, or yes, applications? Yes, very much so. So um, we, we have a startup incubator in the University of Toronto. It's called the Creative Destruction Lab. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we started a, a program for, for quantum startups. So we are into our second cohort. And every year we see 20 companies trying different applications. So now there are a few industries that you know, start to emerge as, as, as good destinations for using quantum computers. So one of them would be logistics. You know, it's, it's very natural because it, you have a bunch of cities, for instance, and you want to route some vehicles. And that's a very natural fit for these like, discrete optimization problems that quantum computers can solve. Then you have... Uh, drug discovery, where you can combine some, some machine learning algorithm with optimization over molecular structures. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, it's very natural for a quantum computer. Then you can think of uh, the discovery of new materials, where it's important uh, to factor in the quantum mechanical properties of chemical compounds. Then you know, a quantum computer can simulate these molecules. And, and with combining with some learning <laughs> algorithm, you can find fun, new, interesting materials. And, and then um, the last like, big application area is finance, which you know, requires a lot of optimization, a lot of sampling. So it's, it's again a good fit for quantum computers. Okay, and so in, you know, as this research develops and you spend a few more years on it, do you see like there's a kind of a problem, I guess, that you're running into where if you solve that, you know, people are saying to your, uh, you know, companies are saying to you, this is kind of the problem we want this, this uh, research to solve? Or is it more your exploratory it's, and looking it's, it's for... It's getting there. It's getting there. So if, if you look back three years, then there was this paper by Google where they, where they crafted a problem in a way that they could squeeze out a hundred million times speed up on a quantum computer. But you know, it, it wasn't a problem relevant to any practical application. It was designed for several months to fit the quantum computer the best. Right. And we are slowly shifting away from that. So what we do in this incubator pro uh, uh, program is we explore ideas that you know people are interested in, that have that have business value, and they start to see like you know what are the kind of problems that are a natural fit to these computers, and and the quantum computers don't give you a lift yet, mm -hmm. but in a few years they will. So it's we are in this exploratory phase, but in a year, two years, or three years, we will find the right applications and the right skill that that the hardware can give us. If people want to get started with this kind of uh, quantum computing, you know, are there resources online or are there places they can go to learn more or to get started? 
working on these problems? Okay, okay I'm gonna do a shameless plug. So uh, I'm, I'm creating a massively open online course uh, on quantum machine learning. So awesome. it's, it's gonna go online next, uh, next February. And uh, so I'm gonna teach all of this. So I'm going to talk about uh, uh, quantum computing, especially quantum computing on, on these imperfect quantum computers, how you use them for machine learning in the, in, like, in the short run, and also in the long run when you have like, more perfect and more scalable quantum computers. And uh, is, there, is there a fee for this course? Because I'd like to be a student. So, uh, <laughs> it's free to take, but if, but if you want to get a certificate, then you have to pay something. I don't okay. know what. what sort of background would I need to take this course? I'm up machine learning. Workshop. Machine learning. So okay. if, if you know, so I require two things really, uh, linear algebra mm -hmm. and Python. Okay. So it's, it's going to be very hands-on. So every piece of mathematics and every piece of physics will be complemented by, by just a piece of code. So people with a coding or a machine learning background can easily understand it and you know, start developing learning algorithms. There's a really nice linear algebra course on YouTube by Grant Sanderson. He has a YouTube channel called Three Blue One Brown. So if you wanted to, I, I need to refresh in my linear algebra. So I'm going to go read that. But yeah, he's also the person that did the deep learning videos that Gabe uh, referenced in the Web Summit talks. Yeah. Well, uh, Dr. Wittick, I, this is really really cool. This is a fascinating area of research. I'm just I'm blown away that we we have you you here to speak at reInvent and. Uh, I hope you'll come back again and share some of your findings with us. I think you've uh, got two students on your MOOC, so we'll, uh, we'll definitely sign up. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, everybody, stay tuned for more coverage here from reInvent.